Hallo Deutschlerner! Today's video is going to be the first of a series of videos in which I explain every single question word that the German language has to offer, including how to use them and any quirks that might throw you off when you're first learning about them. Today we're concerning ourselves with the question words for people. There are four of them, one for every case in the German language. Wer, wen, wem, and wessen. Once you finish learning about these question words in this video, don't forget to try writing your own questions in the comments down below so you can check your understanding. I'll be active in the comments, checking your grammar, and making sure that you really understand the concepts. So without further ado, let's get into our first question word. One of the first question words that German learners will encounter is the question word wer. Wer is used when we want to know the identity of the subject of the sentence. Essentially, it's the same as the English word who. For example, wer ist das? Who is that? Wer ist das? Wer ist das? Wer kauft die Karten? Who is buying the tickets? Wer kauft die Karten? Wer kauft die Karten? Wer hat dich eingeladen? Who invited you? Wer hat dich eingeladen? Wer hat dich eingeladen? Wer hat das Buch geschrieben? Who wrote the book? Wer hat das Buch geschrieben? Wer hat das Buch geschrieben? Wer kann mir helfen? Who can help me? Wer kann mir helfen? Wer kann mir helfen? Wer war der erste Mensch auf dem Mond? Who was the first person on the moon? Wer war der erste Mensch auf dem Mond? Wer war der erste Mensch auf dem Mond? When you're deciding whether or not you need wer as your question word, you need to answer two parts. Is this question asking for a person in the answer? And is that person the subject of the sentence? If the answer to both of these questions is yes, you need wer as your question word. The only problem with translating wer as who is that native English speakers don't use their own language properly. It is common in spoken English to use the question word who to inquire about people regardless of how they appear in the sentence. This means that who can be a subject or an object. In German, the question word wer is exclusively used as the subject of the sentence. This brings us to our second question word for the day, wen. This question word is best translated into English with the question word whom. Ask any native English speaker to explain how to use whom properly, or what the difference between who and whom is, and you will be greeted with blank stares and slack jaws. Well, Luckily for you, I happen to be one of about a dozen native English speakers who knows the difference. Who is exclusively used as the subject of the sentence, just like wer in German. Whom, on the other hand, is used when we are inquiring about a person who is not the subject of the sentence. In German, we have to be slightly more specific than that. Wen is used when the person about whom we are inquiring is used in the accusative case. This could be a direct object meaning the person that is being acted upon in the sentence. For example, Wen ruft er an? Whom is he calling? Wen ruft er an? Wen ruft er an? Wen möchtest du zur Party einladen? Whom would you like to invite to the party? Wen möchtest du zur Party Einladen. Wen möchtest du zur Party einladen? Wen möchte sie besser kennenlernen? Whom would she like to get to know better? Wen möchte sie besser kennenlernen? Wen möchte sie besser kennenlernen? You can also use wen with a preposition and the accusative case. For example, für wen arbeitest du? For whom do you work? Für wen arbeitest du? Für wen arbeitest du? Auf wen wartet der Lehrer? For whom is the teacher waiting? Auf wen wartet der 
Lehrer. Auf wen wartet der Lehrer? Gegen wen hast du gespielt? Against whom did you play? Gegen wen hast du gespielt? Gegen wen hast du gespielt? Über wen sprecht ihr? About whom are you speaking? Über wen sprecht ihr? Über wen sprecht ihr? In wen bist du verliebt? With whom are you in love? In wen bist du verliebt? In wen bist du verliebt? I use two different categories of prepositions in those examples. Für and gegen are prepositions that are always used with the accusative case, conveniently called accusative prepositions, while auf, über, and in are all two-way prepositions, or Wechselpräpositionen, which only require the accusative case in certain circumstances. I have videos about both of those categories linked in the description if you want to take a deeper dive into those topics. Similar to the logic behind using wer, when deciding to use wen as your question word, you need to answer two questions. Is this question asking about a person, and is this person in the accusative case in this question? If the answer to both of these questions is yes, you need wen. While English only has one whom to worry about, German has two. In addition to the accusative question word wen, there's also a dative version wem. This question word is used to inquire about people in the indirect object position of the sentence. This is essentially the person to whom or for whom something is done within the sentence. Generally, this person is receiving whatever the direct object of the sentence is. For example, Wem hast du das Geld gegeben? Whom did you give the money? Wem hast du das Geld gegeben? Wem hast du das Geld gegeben? Wem schreibt er einen Brief? Whom is he writing a letter? Wem schreibt er einen Brief? Wem schreibt er einen Brief? Wem hat die Bibliothekerin das Buch geliehen? Whom did the librarian lend the book? Wem hat die Bibliothekerin das Buch geliehen. Wem hat die Bibliothekerin das Buch geliehen? English grammar nerd side note. If you're an English native speaker wondering why I phrased the English sentences like I did, you're not alone. Even Google thinks that I wrote these sentences wrong because no English speakers use proper grammar anymore. Google Docs wants me to change these sentences to include the word to at the end of the sentence, but as your English teacher probably has taught you, prepositions are not something we end sentences with. I'm sure they phrased it differently to avoid using with at the end of the sentence, but this version makes me smile, so I did it anyway. Technically, if you do add the word to to these sentences, it should be before the word whom, which again would result in no preposition at the end of the sentence. To whom did you give the money? To whom is he writing the letter? To whom did the librarian lend the book? Back to the German question word wem. In addition to the use of the dative case as the indirect object, you might remember that the dative case is also used with certain verbs which require dative objects, conveniently called dative verbs. When the question word is the object of one of these dative verbs, you need the dative question word wem. For example, wem hilft sie mit den Hausaufgaben? Whom is she helping with the homework? Wem hilft sie mit den Hausaufgaben? Wem hilft sie mit den Hausaufgaben? Wem dankt der Kellner? Whom is the waiter thanking? Wem dankt der Kellner? Wem dankt der Kellner? Wem gehört dieses Auto? To whom does this car belong? Wem gehört dieses Auto? Wem gehört dieses Auto? There is still one more dative case use for the question word wem. Just as there are accusative prepositions, there are dative prepositions. You can use those in front of question words. When you do this, you need to use the question word wem. For example, 
Mit wem gehst du ins Kino? With whom are you going to the movie theater? Mit wem gehst du ins Kino? Mit wem gehst du ins Kino? Neben wem sitzt er im Bus? Next to whom does he sit on the bus? Neben wem sitzt er im Bus? Neben wem sitzt er im Bus? Vor wem hat Joker Angst? Of whom is Joker afraid? Vor wem hat Joker Angst? Vor wem hat Joker Angst? Von wem hat er das gehört? From whom did he hear that? Von wem hat er das gehört? Von wem hat er das gehört? One more time, you can ask yourself two questions. Is the question asking for a person, and is that person in the dative case? If the answer to both of these questions is yes, you need wem. If you're looking for a more thorough explanation of indirect objects, dative verbs, or dative prepositions, I have links in the description for videos about all of those topics too. And now for a German grammar power tip. An easier way to decide if you need wer, wen, or wem as your question word is to rewrite the question into a statement with a masculine pronoun instead of the question word. The question word and the masculine pronoun will always have the same last letter. For example, wer kauft die Karten? Who is buying the tickets? Er kauft die Karten. He is buying the tickets. Both wer and er have the same last letter. Wen ruft er an? Whom is he calling? Er ruft ihn an. He is calling him. The pronoun to which the question word wen refers is ihn in the statement version. This tells us that we need an N at the end of our question word as well. Therefore, wen. Wem hast du das Geld gegeben? To whom did you give the money? Ich habe ihm das Geld gegeben. I gave him the money. The question word wem is used because the dative case is needed and we can see that expressed through the pronoun ihm in the statement version. English grammar nerd side note. One super cool part about this is that it actually works in English to a certain extent as well. If you would say him in English, you should be using whom in a question version of that same sentence. You would need an m at the end of the question word when there is an m at the end of the pronoun in the statement. For example, who is buying the tickets? He is buying the tickets. He does not have an M at the end of it, which means that our question word who also does not need an M. Whom is he calling? He is calling him. Him has an M at the end of it, which means our question word whom also has an M. Whom did you give the money? I gave him the money. Him again has an M at the end of it, just like whom does. You could also phrase this as to whom did you give the money? I gave the money to him. Again, we still have an M at the end of both our question word and our pronoun. The last question word on our list for today is used to inquire about the genitive case. This question word, wessen, is most easily translated into English with the word whose. This word will most likely be followed by a noun, especially for those of you who aren't very far in your German learning. Here are a few examples of how you can use wessen in questions. Wessen Idee war das? Whose idea was that? Wessen Idee Va das? Wessen Idee war das? Wessen Auto steht vor dem Haus? Whose car is parked in front of the house? Wessen Auto steht vor dem Haus? Wessen Auto steht vor dem Haus? Wessen Laptop hast du dir ausgeliehen? Whose laptop did you borrow? Wessen Laptop hast Du dir ausgeliehen? Wessen Laptop hast du dir ausgeliehen? Mit wessen Eltern bist du nach Hause gefahren? With whose parents did you drive home? Mit wessen Eltern bist du nach Hause gefahren? Mit wessen Eltern bist du nach Hause gefahren? Now show me that you are really paying attention throughout this entire video. Write a comment down below that includes one question for each of the four question words in this video. I'll check your grammar and make sure that you know what you're doing. 
If you really want to practice what you've learned in this video, you can get extra materials to go with this lesson by becoming a member of my Deutschlerner Club. There's a link in the description for that. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is just the first of several videos that I plan to make about question words. The question words for today are all used to ask questions to which the answer is a person or multiple people. In future lessons, I will cover all of the other question words that you will ever need to know. Das ist alles für heute. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!